Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this video is the second in a series of videos designed to help you make sense of the idea of limit. Now previously, we examined the output behavior of a rational function where the input quantity was nearby too. That function in the previous video was x squared minus four all divided by x minus two. In this case, we're gonna make the little change to that numerator and make it x squared plus four and examine and see what happens in that little subtle change of the numerator. So first, remember that this limit idea is saying, examine the behavior, the output behavior of this function for input values nearby to two, but not equal to two. Again, the reason I say that is because if x was indeed equal to two, the denominator would say two minus two, which is zero, division by zero is impossible, so that's not what we're talking about here. We want to examine the behavior of this function for input quantities that are just nearby to two. So can you imagine? If x is nearby to two, really, really, really close, we say things like it's infinitesimally close to two. If x is infinitesimally close to two and you square that quantity, you're gonna get a value that's really, really close to four, but not equal to four. And if you take a value that's really close to four and add four, you're gonna get a quantity that's really close to eight. So as x gets nearby to two, the numerator is gonna get nearby to eight. But the denominator is another story. If x is nearby to two, now we have to think about this thing from two different ways. In one sense, x could be nearby to two, just to the right of two, just greater than two. Imagine that x is just a little bit bigger than two. If you take a little bit bigger than two and subtract two, what you're left with is a very small positive quantity. Just for sake of illustrating this idea, imagine that x is 2.0000000000001, and you subtract two. The result will be 0.0000000, however many zeros I said, in a one. Now, if you take an eight, or a nearby to eight, and divide by this very, 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 very small number, the result is gonna be a very, very, very large number. Now, on the other hand, what if x was nearby to two, but just slightly less than two, like 1.9999999999? Now what happens? Imagine if x is 1.9999999 and you subtract two, since this is a little bit less than two, subtract two, the result is gonna be a negative 0. 0.0000. Now in this case, when you divide eight divided by that really small negative, nearby to zero but negative quantity, the result is gonna be very, very, very large negative. So here's what we do. We say, think about the limit as x approaches two, and we put a little plus sign here to indicate we're talking about input values nearby to two, just slightly bigger than two. And what we discovered when we thought through that is we get a nearby eight in the numerator and we get something really small in the denominator. And so the output is gigantic. We say the output just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it approaches infinity. Or on the other hand, if we allow those input quantities to approach two from the slightly less than two, slightly to the left of two, like 1.99999, a little negative sign up there indicates that idea. And what we thought about is the numerator is still getting close to eight, but the denominator, taking something slightly less than two and subtracting two, produces a very small negative quantity. And so when we think that through, the result is a very large, but negative amounts, we say, the limit would be uh, blowing up to negative infinity. Now, we're gonna explore this using technology next to just confirm what we're thinking here. So we were examining the rational function x squared plus four, all divided by x minus two, and from our just mental math analysis of it, it seemed as though the closer the input quantity of x got to the value of two, 
the output fun uh, output values just seem to either get bigger, bigger, bigger in a positive way or bigger, bigger, bigger in a negative way. So now we're going to look at those that idea, both of those quantities, from a graphical and tabular approach and see if we can confirm what we're thinking. So notice I've graphed the function x squared plus 4 or x minus 2, and we see the graph over here. So let's think about what happens to this function as the input quantities get closer and closer to 2. If we look up at the graph, we do indeed see that that graph just seems to heading, be heading upwards off to infinity. If I just drag this graph down, we see that as x gets closer and closer to 2, that dashed line shows the value x equals 2, that the output values just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's just get that sense a little bit more. Notice as x now is 2.1, that the value of y just the, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So yes, indeed, that is exactly what we think is happening. But let's examine the table and see if that's true. Let's actually get some computations done. Notice in the table, when x is 2.1 as an input, the output is 84. When x is 2.001, the output is over 8,000. And when x is 2.0001, the output is over 80,000. So yes, this hunch that we had is, is probably true, that the bigger Sorry, the closer the input quantity gets, gets to 2, the just bigger and bigger and bigger the output value seems to get. But what about for values of x, the input quantity, when we're to the left of 2, like quantities like 1.999? Again, going back to the graph, if we, get, if we allow x to get close to 2 from the left side of 2, like 1.99999, we see this graph just zooming off downward in the negative direction towards negative infinity. And again, I can move the graph and kind of get that sense. Notice now I'm getting close to x equals 1.9 and beyond, and the output values just seem to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. And just one more little look here. Now x is about 1.96, and the output values are just negative in the hundreds. And just to confirm that idea, let's again look at the table of values we see exactly that idea happening. When x is 1.99, the output value is negative almost 800. And when x is 1.999, the output value is almost negative 8,000. So our hunch is confirmed. The closer x gets to 2 from the left side of 2, the more negative, the larger and larger negative quantities uh, are seen for the output values. Now let's go back and see what this means for us in terms of reporting this limit. So we've analyzed this rational function just kind of in our mind. We've analyzed it using graphs, using tables. And now let's just kind of put the finishing touches on this. What we're saying is, as x approaches 2 from the positive side of 2, or the right side of 2, or values slightly larger than 2, that function just exploded and went off to positive infinity. When x approaches 2 from the left side of 2, for values slightly less than 2, that function blew up, but to a negative infinity. So here's what we say. The limit as x approaches 2, and we don't indicate from the right side or the left side, from the positive side or the negative side, we just say the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 4 over x minus 2, what we say is this limit does not exist. In order for a limit to exist, we would have to see the same output behavior from both sides of, in this case, 2, or whatever the input quantity is. And if we don't, we just say that this limit does not exist. I'm going to abbreviate that DNE, does not exist.